Welcome to our webcast. I'm Alice Seyfried, curator of the Children's Zoo here at the St. Louis Zoo. Today we have five great stories to show you about how we care for our animals. First up is a tiny little Australian with a very big smile. Like most baby birds, this tawny frogmouth chick came into the world without many feathers, and she will need constant warmth, multiple feedings every day, and her eyes will stay closed for several days, at least five or six days. Her appearance changes pretty quickly, and at just a few days old, you can already see the trademark wide frog-like mouth. Our goal is to have the parents raise their own chicks whenever possible. But first-time parents, like the parents of this frogmouth chick, they sometimes don't quite know what to do. So there are times when we need to step in to help. There are only about 125 birds in U.S. zoos, and their population is getting older. So the St. Louis Zoo, along with other partners in the Association of Zoos and Aquariums, brought in 12 pairs from two Australian zoos. These adult birds were either born in other zoos or orphaned as chicks and could not be released into the wild. So at about one month old, this chick is about ready to fledge the nest. That means she's starting to learn to fly. So we will move her to another space in the off-exhibit breeding area so she can stretch her wings. It's really been gratifying to work with this species. Uh, again, as a keeper, we don't often hand rear chicks, but when we do and it's successful, uh, it's really thrilling. We're really moving up in size with this story. Rhinos are amazing animals. Sadly, they're threatened with extinction in the wild. Our rhino keeper will tell you why and share some stories about our rhino family here at the zoo. My name is Stephanie Richmond and I'm a river's edge keeper here at the zoo. I've been taking care of the rhinos here for about five years. Our female is Katie Rain. She's almost nine years old. Our adult male is a Jabu, also nine years old. And then their offspring, or their son, Ruka, and he will be three years old in January. Black rhinos are one of five species of rhinos, uh, three of which are critically endangered. The main reason that rhinos are so endangered is because they're killed for their horns. Many Asian cultures and countries believe that rhino horn, or by consuming rhino horn, they are able to cure diseases, everything from fever and headaches to cancer. Um, it's even considered in some countries to be a party drug. So rhino horn is made up of keratin. It's the same material as, as your fingernails and hair. Studies have shown that rhino horn is not medicine. Black rhinos are found in savannas and grasslands of Africa. They're browsers, meaning that they eat branches and leaves from the trees. You may notice when watching our rhinos that they have a prehensile lip. It's basically an all-muscular lip that they can use to grab those branches and those leaves out of the trees to pull down and eat them. Both male and female black rhinos have horns. Their main use of their horn is for defense. Black rhinos have an excellent sense of smell and hearing, but what they don't have is a great sense of sight. They can't see really well, so often what they do is they just see movement and they charge first and ask questions later. One of the things you can do at home to help save rhinos is to only buy products with sustainable palm oil. When they plant the palm oil trees, they clear cut the rainforest, thereby destroying the rhinos' homes. Last we saw these little babies, they were just 72 hours old and so tiny. Now they live out with the rest of the herd in the goat yard at the children's zoo, climbing and jumping all around the rocks like big goats do. You can see the babies jump and play, even at this early, early age. Play is work for baby goats, just as it is for small children. This is how they'll learn the skills they need to follow their moms out in the goat yard and climb on the rocks and frolic with the other goats. It's important to get weights on these babies for several reasons. Of course, we need to track their weights as they grow, make sure they're staying strong and healthy. Also, their mom, Ava, is a first-time mom. First-time moms can sometimes have trouble producing enough milk, especially when they have twins. So we'll track that as well. Ava is housed here in the goat barn with her mother. Sometimes first-time moms can be nervous, and the comfort of having her mother with her calms her and helps her take better care of the goats. As her mother is an experienced mom, Ava will also learn from her as she cares for her new babies. This is Sterling, our silvery cheek to our bill. She's a children's zoo favorite, and you're gonna get a chance to see her fly. When the weather doesn't cooperate, we find anywhere we can to train Sterling. We are in one of our education department classrooms right now. 
Sterling loves to come out and fly, and this is good for Sterling in several regards. It's very enriching. It keeps her in shape for show season when she flies across our children's zoo stage, and it gives her a great opportunity to bond with her trainers, Susie and Sue. If you watch carefully, you'll see how they give Sterling a cue by rolling their index finger to send her from one trainer to another. When she lands on the hand, she gets a verbal good and a tasty treat. Blueberries are Sterling's favorite. This exercise is important to Sterling as she's a large bird, but just as important is the relationship that she has with her trainers and the enrichment it provides her during her day. We hope this show has been rewarding and enriching for you as well, and that you'll check back often for future webisodes. Now for your daily dose of cute, our newest baby at the primate house, the colobus monkey.